Walla walla walla. So this is the part three of this. So I did promise y'all three Japanese videos in one day. So I can do ten, but like I just wanted to do just three, just for you guys. Um, so we're gonna talk about Ben K. So Ben K, he's basically a Japanese warrior monk. So in many Japanese stories and many Japanese tattoo, a lot of um Irizumi and um Harbori artists like love Ben K for some apparent reason. He's like their hero. He's like their version of their robin hood in a sense but he's not robin hood but he's kind of like their robin hood because there's another character that's exactly like robin hood in the east asian culture so brief history of ben k ben k was an actual person so he's a folklore and an actual person now ben k his name is Sa asato mushahibo ben k um he was born in 1155 to 1880 sorry to 1189 Popularly known as Benkei, was a Japanese warrior monk, Shohen, who lived in the latter years of the Heian period, which is 7, 794 to 1185. Benkei led a varied life, first becoming a monk, then a Mount ascetic, and then a rogue warrior. He later came to respect the server famous warrior Miyamoto no Yushinune, also known as Ushi Wakamaru. He is commonly depicted as a man of great strength and loyalty and popular subject of Japanese folklore showcased in many ancient and modern literature productions. So his early life is basically is the stories about Benkei birth very considerably, um, just like Kentaro. Um, one tells that his father was the head of the temple shrine who raped his mother and a daughter of a blacksmith. Another sees him as an offspring of a temple god. Many give him an attribute of a demon and a monster child with wild hair, long teeth in his youth. Ben K have may have been called Oniwaka, demon ogre child, and their famous Okioi works themed as Oniwakamaru and his adventures. He is said to have defeated over 200 men in each battle he was personally involved in. Ben K chose to join the mon monastic establishment at an early age and travel widely among Buddhist monasteries of Japan. During this period, monasteries were not only a point of central administration and culture, but also military power their own right, similar to Roman legions. Like many other monks, Benkei was likely a trained use of the Nagata, a half moon spear. Like I heard the Nagata is very heavy and very long, that's what I heard. Um, you need to be very skilled to use a Nagata. Um, I've seen it in anime and a lot of like um, fighting Japanese uh, video games. But anyway, at the age of 17, Benkei was said to have been 2 meters, 6.6 .6 feet tall. Wow, he's very tall. He's a tall, he's almost a basketball player height. At this point, he was left monastery to became a Yamabushi, a member of the sect of Mountain Ascetics. Benkei was commonly depicted as wearing a black cap, was a signature theme of Mountain Ascetics. Seven weapons. Benkei armed himself with seven weapons and is often depicted as carrying on those in his back. In addition to his sword, he carried a broad axe, masakari, a reike, kumande, a sickle, nagigamama, yeah, and a wooden mallet, hizuchi, and a saw, nokogiri, an iron staff, tisobo, and a Japanese glove, na um, naganata. Now, Benkei would say he had wandered around Kyoto every night to depicting quests to take a thousand swords from each samurai warrior, who we believe were arrogant and unworthy. After collecting 99, 199 swords through duels looking for his final prize, he met a young man playing a flute called Go Gojo Tenjin Shrine in Kyoto. After he has 199 swords, um, basically, like the much shorter man supposedly carried a gilded sword around him in his waist. Instead of dueling at the shrine himself, itself, the walk to to a Gojo bridge in the city where the bigger Benkei ultimately lost to a smaller warrior, who happened to be Miyamoto no Yush Yushinui, the son of Miyamoto no Yush Yushitomo. Some sources claim that the fight, the fight took place not at the Gojo bridge, but instead at the Masasubara bridge. Not only long after the duel, Ben Cave, very very frustrated, looking for vengeance and revenge, waited for Yushinui at the Buddhist temple at Kiyozumizu, where he lost again. Hence, fourth, he became Yushinui's retainer and fought with him at the Genpei War against the Taira clan. 
until 1885. Sorry, until 1118. Sorry, guys. Until 1185, until his death in 1189, Benkei ac accompanied Yushinui as an outlaw. Now, this is the most famous story that everyone loves, especially people who get the Japanese tattoo of this guy. Especially, I see a lot of like MMA fighters get in his back. I see a lot of um, Yakuza, um, a lot of Yakuza guys that get Benkei on his back or Benkei in his side or Benkei as his leg sleeve. Um, especially his, his, his Nagata, they get his Nagata across their chest or their back or whatever, for a small piece. Um, this is the most famous story of the whole part of the whole thing. His death, right, to talk about his death, in the end, Benkei and Yushinoe were in, encircled in the castle of Koromogawa no Taite, as Ishinui retired from the inner keep of the castle to commit ritual suicide, seppuku. On his own, Benkei stood guard at the bridge in front of the main gate to protect Yushinui. It is said that the soldiers were afraid to cross the bridge to confront him, that all that all who did met a swift death by the hands of a gigantic man, because he was six feet six feet six, very tall man, who killed in excess of three hundred trained soldiers. Realizing that the close combat would mean suicide, the warrior followed Miyamoto ni uh, no Yorotome, sorry for the butcher Japanese names wrong, sorry, decided to shoot and kill Benkei with arrows instead. Long after the battle has should have been over, the soldiers noticed that the arrow ridden wounded cover Benkei was still standing. This is the famous part of the story. Because he was still standing, they considered him as like immortal. When the soldiers dared to cross the bridge and take a closer look, the heroic, heroic warrior fell to the ground as died strand standing upright. This is known as the standing death of Benkei or Benkei no Tachi Ojo. Benkei has died at the age of 34. Ata, Ata Go Do, now called Benkei Do, features a statue of Benkei six feet, two inches in the height of the posture he stood when he died at Koromogawa. It was built in an era of Shotoku, 17, 1711 to 1716. Replacing an older monument in olden times, Benkei Do, Do was at the foot of Shusuji Hill until it was demolished. The ruins and single pine trees still remain. In popular culture, especially in anime, film, and television, um, Benkei's loyalty and honor has made him a mainstay of Japanese folklore, as well as a popular subject of literature and entertainment. One kabuki play places Benkei as a moral dilemma, caught between lying protecting his lord in order to cross a bridge. A critical moment in his drama it is climax, where the monk, the monk realizes the situation and vows that he must. In other plays, Benkei slayed his own child to save the daughter of a lord, or no, a no play, N-O-H, Ataka, Benkei would be his own master disguised as a porter in order to avoid breaking his disguise. Ataka was later adapted into a kabuki play, Kanjin Cho, which became one of the most popular wider performed works in Japanese theater. Um, Benkei is portrayed in many films and television, as I said before. Um, one film he was portrayed in Denjiro Oke, Okuro, portrays Benkei. And Akira Kurosawa's 1945 film, Men Who Tread the Tiger's Trail. Um, video games, of course, Genji the Dawn of Time. And also, there was many characters that was inspired by him, including Dragon Ball Z. Um, including Yu-Gi-Oh! Including, like, um, Tekken. Um, Tekken was inspired by it. Like, he's not the exact character, but, he's, but it was inspired by Benkei. Um, many movies and many like big figures, like tall figures, because it was unusual for Asian people to be that tall. Unusual, like in the average sense, there is tall Asians, but it was unusual to be that tall, like six, six, six foot. Like in their consideration, they consider you have great genes. You you have a gigantic genes. 